Hello, my friends. Hello, fellow adventurers. Hello, fellow painters and fellow terrain makers. And welcome back to my painting channel. And in this video, we are going to be making a really cool uh, terrain piece. This is going to be uh, made using this really cheap, really uh, sort of, I don't know, uh, basic uh, Halloween toy. So this was uh, something that was about a pound fifty, as you can see, one forty nine, in fact. So about a pound forty nine, something like that. Um, and this is something that I've had just hanging around uh, the house for a little while. But as you can see, it's broken. So instead of throwing this away, we're going to reuse this, and we're going to create a really cool sort of serpent or dragon style terrain piece. Now for this, that's all I'm going to use is a basic ten by eight board out of the back of a. Uh, photo frames so any normal photo frame uh, 10 by 8 board would do or any board of this sort of size and then I've just got a small sheet of polystyrene this is from something that um, uh, my my son had ordered something uh, I think was just like a, a record player and then it's come with a few bits of polystyrene sheets in there so that's all I'm going to do is just measure out the polystyrene sheet um, just to kind of get this to the same size and then I'm going to very very carefully use my hobby knife uh, it might not look like a hobby knife but these knives are very very sharp and this is what I said I'm going to be very very careful so it's always good to be very careful when using your hobby knives and that's all I'm going to do is just uh, cut this uh, polystyrene sheet to fit this 10 by 8 board now you can mark this out in a different way you can mark this out a little bit better uh, if you like but pretty much that's all I'm going to do is just trace around the shape of uh, um, just going to trace around the shape of the uh, the board. So just placing the board on top, pressing down firmly, and then just using the knife to cut these bits out. Um, with normal polystyrene as opposed to the XPS foam, what you do end up with when you work like this is a little bit of these little balls and the, the parts of the polystyrene will actually sort of uh, break apart in this way. But don't worry too much because we can use a hot wire cutter to kind of mimic, manipulate and make this into something uh, looking a little bit better. And that's what we're going to do uh, in a little bit. So don't worry too much because we're going to tidy up all of those edges and we're not going to have all of these little balls and things like that everywhere. Um, in fact, we're going to sweep all of these away and make sure that these are all put away nice and tidy. Uh, so that that means my wife doesn't give me a row for making too much mess, which happens more often than you'd think. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm just peeling off all of those excess bits just because we don't want those falling off when we work on this. And there we go, just rubbing across the sides just like so. And all of those little excess bits and balls and, and all these little uh, parts will just come off in your hand. And there we go. We should have a nice sheet that fits the size of our board. Should look something like this. And that's all we're going to do then is just tear apart this um, this old Halloween toy. So I'm going to take the jawbone off the bottom because we don't want any moving parts and things like that. All of these legs also seem quite long. So I'm just going to cut these off using a normal pair of snips. Uh, these did shoot around the room a little bit, so <laughs> it was a little bit of fun. Um, the cats had a little bit of fun chasing these uh, when they were shooting off into the distance. Um, so yeah, just going to cut these into uh, a much smaller sort of uh, size just so that that gives me a little bit more to work with when they this tall uh, the the sort of bones may stand off the base a little bit too high whereas I want the the bones to sort of sit and sink into the base a little bit so as you can see I'm just going to uh, cut around I'm leaving it a little bit taller just on the, uh, the the sort of the skull side and a little bit shorter at the bottom side just so that it looks like the uh, the serpent is just a little bit higher up on one end and as you can see, my little ginger cat there, my little orange cat, fiery orange cat, is just uh, chasing the little bits as well. Now that's all I'm going to do is just place and press this as hard as I can down into the uh, the polystyrene. I'm just pressing this in just so that this gives me an idea as to where this is going to sit. Um, and it's also going to allow me then to glue this down as well. So there's certain glues that will work well with foam and polystyrene and things like that. There's some glues that won't work. You can't use things like super glue with this because it literally just melts the foam and that's the last thing we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Mod Podge and I'm using the matte version of this Mod Podge. And first things first, I'm just going to cover all of the board using uh, a nice thick healthy dose of Mod Podge just like so and this is going to create a really nice uh, layer that will allow the foam to stick to the board as I say certain glues work well with foam certain ones don't uh, Mod Podge being pretty much just like a PVA glue mixture is a perfect perfect 
uh, glue for this because it holds um, really, really strong, but it also doesn't melt or destroy the foam in any way. It gives you a really good uh, sort of... Um, gives you a really good sort of seal and, and holds the foam down really well. As you can see, I'm just covering as much of the board as I can, put in a really nice thick layer all the way across just to kind of create this nice, um, this nice thick seal all the way. It's also important to make sure that you use a really old um, basing brush for this. You don't want to ruin any of your good brushes, so try not to use any of those really good brushes that you spent a good bit of money on. Just use your old and broken, worn down uh, basing brushes, uh, because when you're making bases and terrain, it does get rather messy. And there we go. So then we're just going to press this down nice and strong. As you can see, just trying to make sure that I get this across in the right sort of way. And then just pressing this down. Now what I will do is, or what I have done, um, is I've just placed something on top of this, like a book. And I've just left that sit there then for a good day or so, just to make sure that the foam really does stick down and really does glue down and hold uh, to that board. Now once that's done, I'm then going to use the hot wire cutter. And it it is important to do this in a well ventilated area make sure that the windows are open or at least uh, you're wearing some kind of mask i do normally have a mask that i wear i use that as well for my 3d printing uh, just to be safe when using anything that requires a bit of chemicals when you use the hot wire cutter to cut through polystyrene like this it does give off a lot of chemicals so make make sure it is very very important you make sure that you do this in a well ventilated area in an area where it allows uh, good airflow and air circulation and that's all i'm doing is just using that hot air cutter uh that a hot wire cutter sorry just to cut uh sort of a groove and a gradient going from one of the corners so that that looks like we've got a little bit of a, ha a hill or a mound and then as i said with all those ball areas and all those bits just down the side i'm just going to use that hot wire cutter as well just to create the element or illusion that we've got a little bit of uh, movement and a little bit of a rocky or muddy sort of uh, area as well, just like so. And that's all I'm just going to do, there we go, is just run this across at an angle, just like so. Once that's done then, we should have something that is similar to this, where we've got a little bit of a, as I say, a slight incline from the base and upwards into this hill. And then we're just going back with our Mod Podge and just covering a nice amount of the area uh, where we've placed the serpent previously and we're just going to place this across all of that and then again just going to press the serpent down nice and heavily nice and strong and then again i'm just going to place a good bit of mod podge all around so this creates a nice thick seal and this will glue um, the serpent in place really really strongly this will create a very strong seal and a very strong bond so once this is on this is going to hold the serpent in place really 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 well so as you can see i'm just putting this all across those bone areas and as you can see there's a little bit that i need to just press down a bit and then once we've done all of this, um, I'm also then going to place um, an area just across the top, just a book across the top with a few heavy weighted uh, points on top, just so that it holds it in place. And again, I'm going to leave that for a good 24 hours or so, just to make sure that this um, really, really does dry down and glues down quite well. Then I'm going to use a Vallejo Terrain Texture. Um, this one I'm using is the uh, the Brown Earth. You can use any colour that you like because you can always um, use a primer to spray it later. But the Brown Earth, I find, uh, ties things together and has the right sort of colour for me as well because I want this to look like a muddy, dirty sort of path. And that's all I'm going to do is using that Terrain Brush again, that ruined old brush. We're just going to use this to stipple and dot and pad all of this terrain into place. By using the stippling technique, you will see that this is allowing me to leave sort of raised areas, bumpy areas, and have this texture and this sort of um, illusion and um, creation that everything isn't uh, flat. So that's giving us raised areas, lower areas, and it's giving us a lot more that we can work on when it comes to things like our dry brushing later, because it's going to really make the earth tone and the earth texture stand out and look like there's a lot of mud there. 
Now I'm going to cover all of the base with this and I'm just going to show you now a little bit of how we're doing this nice and close up and around by the serpent as well. So I'm trying to get this underneath. It doesn't matter too much if you get a bit of this on top of the serpent or around the serpent because that's all going to add to the weathering and things anyway. Once that's dry, I'm then, uh, I have then rather just put a quick primer across. So I've sprayed this with a nice dark brown uh, primer. You can use any primer that you like if you're used to using black, working with black. If you want to spray it brown, if you want to spray it grey, it's completely up to you because you can always work on it later. Once that is dry and the primer is on, then I'm using one of the Vallejo um, dipping formula washes. So this is a really big, big uh, tub of black wash. And I'm just going to use this black tone, this black color to cover the whole uh, terrain piece. So I'm just going across all of the base. And as you can see, all of this mud and dirt now is really starting uh, to show through and really starting to look cool. You can see where that stippling effect has really brought some of the texture out and things like that. And as I say, I'm just going to cover the whole of the uh, terrain piece, including the serpent with this, because this is going to give me a nice darker uh, base tone and a really nice dark base color that I can build up from. It's very, very simple, very easy way of working, but the end result is going to look fantastic. So as you can see, just covering all of the uh, terrain, so like I say, all of the, the earth, all of the skeleton and everything all together. Um, you'll have to let me know uh, in the comment section if this is how you would have approached doing this um, or if this is an easy way of sort of working because you'll see as we gradually build up, you'll see how sort of effective and how um, incredibly good this will look uh, in such a simple, quick and easy way. There we go, just making sure that we cover all of the area as much as possible and just making sure that we get into all of those uh, parts of the skeleton as well, all of the serpent area. And once it's all dry, you should have something that looks like this. You've got this really dark brown area with some of these uh, really dark, dark sort of black patches as well. And then I'm just going to use an army painter skeleton bone and I'm going to use this just to dry brush over the top of that serpent. Now we're going to dry brush this across because this is going to create, as I said, you've got this dark, dark underlying tone. But then, of course, we've got this lighter sort of skeleton color that is going to show through on top. And this is going to create a really cool, uh, dynamic, deep sort of color tone as well. And against sort of the darker areas and against all of the grass and all of the um, sort of different kinds of textures that we're going to put on, this is really going to stand out. It's really going to become a focus piece of your terrain. This is going to be the light, light sort of tone and it's going to zone your eyes to this part of the model quite a lot. So I'm just going to dry brush this all the way across the whole of the skeleton. Again, it doesn't matter too much if you get a little bit on the base or anything. It's not the end of the world because we're going to build up and add grass and uh, all different foliage and things like that as we go anyway. As you can see, I'm just trying to spend a little bit of time making sure that I catch all of those teeth and things just underneath. And yeah, just trying to get everything you can actually really see all of those details now coming across in the bone areas you can see where some of those bits are really starting to stand out and already starting to pop off that base as well and there we go just making sure that we dry brush the whole thing once that's done, then we're going to use a nice light, light cream colour and we're going to use an Elphic Flesh. Elphic Flesh is one of my favourites. This is a really nice light cream colour. It is also a perfect colour to make sure that you uh, highlight normal sort of bone white colours and textures because this is a very, very light cream. So this is what's going to really make the skeleton pop. So as I said earlier, where the skeleton is going to be a very, very strong focus point on the model, this colour and this light cream is really going to help that and really allow this to catch the light. Now you can also still see some of the dark brown areas and some of the dark bits that we've used the black on as well. And again, that's just adding to the illusion of creating this really aged old bone as well. And it's really creating this really, really cool character um, in such a simple way. It still amazes me uh, every now and then when we make things and when I do things like this. It still amazes me how you can make something uh, like this, such a cool piece of terrain with so much character out of something that costs almost nothing. I mean, you're talking about something here for a pound and yet we're creating an amazing amazing cool character and texture out of it it's really really amazing and it does amaze me 
So I'm just going to dry brush all of the earth now. And that's all I'm doing is just using a nice cheap paint so that I don't waste any of my nice expensive paint. So I've just got a basic acrylic color here. This is a chocolate brown. So this is just a nice light sort of uh, brown color. And that's all I'm going to do is just dry brush this across all of the dirt area. This is quite a long process, um, especially with the size of the brush that I decided to use. But hey, this is my terrain brush. Uh, it would be a shame not to use it. So yeah, just make sure that you dry brush all of the uh, dirt, all of the earth, especially around by those bone areas, just like so, and make sure that you cover the whole area. I mean, it doesn't matter too much if you make any mistakes or if you miss any areas, because as I said, we're gonna add quite a lot of grass to this. We're gonna create a real cool scene out of this. I mean, so far, that's all we've got is our base, but once we add a few extra bits, we're really gonna be looking at a fantastic piece of terrain. So yeah, just making sure that we cover all of the areas and you can really see that highlight now starting to catch on all of those raised areas. You can really see now uh, the effect of using that stippling effect on the basing and on the terrain parts. It really makes a big, big difference to the, um, the, the raised areas, those lighter points of the earth, while we keep all of the, uh, the, the sort of darker areas much, much darker. So then we're going to go back to our Mod Podge, our faithful Mod Podge, our good friend Mod Podge. He's done so well for us already. So we're just going to use nice big amounts of Mod Podge. We're going to manipulate this just across uh, the skeleton and across the base. And we're going to leave some areas where we leave little uh, trails and little bits so that it kind of looks like a pathway that people have walked around or areas where the grass hasn't grown. And then we're just going to use whatever your favourite sort of... Um, grass flock uh, is. So for this, I'm using the World War Scenics grass. And that's all I'm going to do is um, just use my finger and thumb just to sprinkle it across all of the areas that we use in the Mod Podge for. The cool thing with this is you can add more as you go. So it's not something that needs to be definite. It's not something that has to be added perfectly and set in stone. You can just build up and build up and add more grass and add more texture um, just by adding a little bit more Mod Podge. And then, as I say, using your finger and thumb, just sprinkling uh, that grass across. That's all you've got to do is sprinkle it across the whole thing and then just wait for it to dry and shake off all of the excess. It's nice and simple. It couldn't be any easier than that. Now, I know a lot of people will use things like a uh, terrain applicator. And absolutely, you can use a terrain applicator should you want to. There is absolutely no um, harm in using a, an applicator. Um, the static side of the applicator will allow the grass to stand up a lot more. So you end up with much more... Um, you can fit a lot more grass and get a lot more sort of uh, of a, a nice sort of finishing touch to it if you use an applicator. Um, but just using your finger and thumb and rolling it round in circles just to create a little bit of a mixture of uh, position where the grass actually ends up on the model uh, works out just fine. Works out just fine. Um, I've never had any trouble doing it this way and it saved me a little bit of money by not having to buy an applicator as well. So as I say, you can add more uh, as you go. So we're just going back to that Mod Podge, as you can see, and just placing this all around the area, leaving little gaps, as I said, just so that that creates a little bit more illusion, creates a bit more story, creates a bit more depth and, and realism to what you're creating as well. You know, if people are walking up and spending time around uh, the serpent, then there'd be little pathways in the grass and bits of missing in the grass where people have been walking quite often across it. So yeah, it just adds to that depth and that illusion as well. And there you go, you can see just using you know, finger and thumb just to, to roll it round in a circle, just to kind of get this mixed sort of random pattern. From there then I'm using a hobby round um, from, I can't even remember the name of the company, uh, it is from Gale Force 9, that's the one. So Gale Force 9 is the company and I'm just using a meadow flock. So this is one of my favourite flocks because this is pretty much just uh, torn up sponge. So it's very, very springy, it's very spongy. This is a brilliant brilliant bit of flock to manipulate onto models because it immediately soaks up the glue and it sticks to models really well but also because you've got a little bit of color you've got the greenery but you've also got little bits of red and things like that in there it actually allows this color and this uh, flock to really stand off the normal grass flock as well so it gives you this really cool texture and this really cool
cool sort of uh, different tone, different colour, creates a little bit more depth and character to what you're building. If you just uh, go straight in with uh, just grass and then more grass on top, then sometimes you can lose a little bit of that character. But using different um, companies and different uh, sort of things like this, so you go from grass flock to the sponge flock, it just creates that, that little bit more depth and creates a little bit more of an interesting looking final piece. The cool thing with the Mod Podge being matte as well is it's going to dry down into a matte effect. So although you can see bits of white at the moment, when it dries down, you won't actually see that later on. And then once we've put all of these little grassy bits in, we're then going to use some of this clump foliage. And the clump foliage, again, is quite springy, but this is quite a large uh, clump foliage so this is going to allow us to create more bushes and more sort of overgrown patches and areas where it looks like we've got a little bit more of a bush or a little bit more uh, overgrown sort of trees or greenery and I'm just going down this little area here and I'm just adding a little bit more of a uh, sort of a thicker area using all of this clump foliage to create a little bit more depth and to create a little bit more um, life and, and like I say a bit more depth to the the, the greenery and, and things like that so I'm just using again just a nice big chunk of that Mod Podge it'll dry down nice and see-through but it'll also dry down nice and matte and it'll hold all of these things together really really strong as well as we go uh, Mod Podge is really really good for this sort of thing so there we go just add in a little bit more just a clump foliage here and there there we go and as you can see it's just creating that depth now so we've got our grass but we've also got our uh, flock meadow with those little red bits in there now the clump foliage as well that's going to create a little bit more depth again and it's just slowly starting to build with this depth and with this character and we're kind of creating this really great overgrown ancient looking serpent and it's quite simple to do it's just a lot of glue and a lot of cool basin stuff but it looks fantastic and it's so so simple to do um, sometimes with terrain and creating your own terrain, sometimes it's easy to kind of worry about whether or not you'll be able to make something uh, that looks cool or whether or not you'll be able to, uh, to, to sort of make something uh, like this out of nothing. But actually, you're only limited by your imagination and a few little bits of terrain pieces. So, yeah. As you can see, I'm just adding a little bit more grass just around that clump foliage, just to tie it all together and get those colours together, but also uh, to make sure that it uh, covers all of that glue as well. Now, for this build, I'm going to add a couple of trees to this. Now, I don't have any wire trees. I know a lot of people use wire trees and things like that. What I do have instead is a few uh, really basic cheap trees that I picked up off Amazon. These were very, very cheap. You can normally buy these in a big, big sort of bulk buy. So they normally give you something like 50 trees for like £10 or something like that. And that's all I'm going to do. This is, again, another advantage of using polystyrene or using foam is by using these trees. I'm going to cover the bottom part in Mod Podge and then literally I'm just going to spear these into uh, the base. So I'm just pushing these straight into the polystyrene and then that Mod Podge is going to dry up and create a really strong seal and that's going to allow these to glue into that base and hold really, really strong. Now also around the base area of the trees, where there will be a little bit more of that Mod Podge and a little bit of that glue hanging around, just add a little bit more grass to it. And again, that'll tie it all together nicely. As you can see, that's all I'm doing is just literally just spearing, just pushing these through into that polystyrene, just into the base. And it's as simple as that. And look at how amazing the trees and things look now. Now we've gone from just being an open field to almost being a clearing. And it's like, it tells a story. It's like we've got this ancient serpent, this ancient dragon. And whereas this thing has, has fallen eventually, you've got a lot of life and greenery growing out of its demise. And I think it's a really cool little uh, added story, a little cool, uh, interesting uh, looking piece of scenery. Once all of that is done and all of that is dry, I'm then turning to my big box of grass tufts. So I bought a box of grass tufts oh, a good while ago. And this has a real big mixture of different coloured grass tufts. And as you can see, I'm just planning which colours I'd like and getting all these different bits out. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a small amount of super glue. And I'm just going to place all of these different grass tufts all in different areas. So we're going to kind of be a little bit more... Um, 
random with where we place these. You don't have to be specific. You don't have to pick an exact position or anything like that. And that's all I'm going to do is just place all of these down into these different areas. And again, this is going to add to that overgrown effect, that overgrown look. And it's really going to show through um, and, and create this real depth and again more character more color and really build into this ancient sort of forest this ancient sort of uh, opening or grove or anything like that the good thing is because we've covered all of the base in our basing material uh, because of that now your base isn't going to be uh, it's not going to uh, be just the polystyrene which means you can use uh, your super glue on top because this now isn't going to melt or damage the polystyrene underneath because we've already uh, kind of fixed and created a great seal to that. And there you go, you can see all these different colours. You can see I'm using yellows, reds, meadow flocks. I've got one there that's got multicoloured bits to it. And all in all, everything, once it's done, should look a little bit like this. And yes, uh, living in Wales, if anyone doesn't live in Wales and would like to know, the sky looks like this for about six months of the year. We're probably in about the fifth month of the sky looking grey and gloomy, uh, but it makes a fantastic backdrop for our ancient serpent uh, base. As always, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your positivity. And thank you for your patience waiting for me to create this video. Uh, please let me know in the comment section what you think of this one, what your favourite part is, if there's anything you do differently, um, and yet, yeah, or what you would use this one for. That would be quite interesting too. So yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everything. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care of yourselves, my friends.